Good morning, my brothers and my sisters. Welcome back to another word of encouragement, your health tip and a prayer with Dr. Deborah Williams, aka Dr. Debs. I send you warm greetings from our Father in heaven, our Lord Jesus, and from the Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining us this morning as we go through our weekly program, encouraging God's children from His Word and always sharing a health tip how you can maintain good health and prosper even as your soul shall prosper. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that we can come into your throne room through Jesus Christ, your son, your darling son, our high priest, our big brother, our savior. Thank you, Heavenly Father, from Genesis to Revelation. We know how the story began, the great controversy that started in heaven. It came to earth, Adam and Eve sinned, and the war is on the earth. There's a curse on the earth because of sin. But Father, thank you so much. This morning we can celebrate that we have a Savior, Jesus Christ, your Son. You gave him to us to save mankind, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in Jesus shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So with joy, we ask you, Father, to baptize us with your Holy Spirit. May your Holy Spirit open our hearts, our minds, to understand the heavenly impact that is being activated on earth to win back your children and take us back into the heavenly family. We need divine counsel. So we ask you, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon us. This is our prayer with thanksgiving, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Brothers and sisters, with Bible in hand, this morning, for our word of encouragement, I want to take you to John 3 and verse 17. My theme is man on a mission of saving love, saving grace. John 3, 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. We live in a world shrouded in darkness, hearts filled with doubts and fears. God's spirit moves upon mankind and we open the Bible and from its pages comes the most beautiful words, clear and pure, cutting through the darkness for God so loved the world. It's an explosion of love, an eruption of grace, unlike anything the world has ever known. God, the creator of the galaxies, the infinite being beyond comprehension, looked upon humanity, fractured by sin and drenched in sorrow, and his heart overflowed with boundless love. Never will he forget that man was made in his image and his likeness. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him male and female created he them. His children whom he loves. Man had sinned against his creator. What is sin? First John 3 and verse 4 tells us, Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Adam was told not to eat of the tree of which God placed a restriction. God's law was not to eat of it. Do not eat of it. Adam, the day eat of it, you shall die. Adam disobeyed and ate of the forbidden tree. The penalty of breaking God's law is death. Romans 6.23 tells us, for the wages of sin is death. But hallelujah, praise the Lord. God never leaves us with a negative. It continues to say, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The moment, brothers and sisters, the moment there was sin, God provided a Savior. 
We read in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21, For he, God, had made him, Jesus Christ, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And for that I say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Father, thank you, Lord Jesus. God didn't send an angel, a prophet, or a lesser being to redeem mankind because they couldn't. He sent his own son, Jesus Christ, the embodiment of his love, the bridge between heaven and earth. In Hebrews 1 and verse 3, we read of Jesus, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. When we see Jesus, we are looking at the very expression, the very express image of God the Father. In John 1, 1 to 2, we read of him. In the beginning was the Word, capital W, and the Word was with God, and the Word, the known, the person, and the Word was God. That is describing Jesus Christ before he put on flesh and became a man to come and pay the price for our sins. The same was in the beginning with God. In Matthew 1 and verse 23, we read, And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Praise the Lord. God came to the earth, brothers and sisters, to redeem us from our fallen condition. It wasn't a reluctant sacrifice, a last resort. It was an act of pure, unadulterated love. The Holy Father and the Holy Son giving selflessly to suffer and die so that sinful man may live for eternity. For the scriptures tell us that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. 2 Corinthians 5 and 9 verse 19. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Can you believe that? That we might be made the righteous of God in him. I have to repeat that for emphasis. Praise he the Lord. Jesus, the one who existed before time, who knew the glory of heaven, willingly walked the path of suffering and death, all for the sake of a humanity that had turned away from him through willful disobedience. Please read Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 1 to 3 to get the full story of what happened in the beginning with Adam and Eve. The offer he extended is not for the chosen few, the righteous or the deserving. It is for whoever, whoever will accept him can be saved for eternity through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Whoever believes, whoever surrenders their hearts to this boundless love, whoever takes a step of faith into the arms of the Father, for them there is no condemnation, no fear, only the promise of everlasting life. Just as the Lord God when went for Adam after his shameful fall into sin, and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Genesis 3 verse 9. So he is calling every child of Adam to receive his gift of salvation and redemption through Jesus Christ, his darling son. Today, I encourage you, brothers and sisters, hear him calling you today. Where art thou? God is still calling his children one by one. Where art thou? In our world of uncertainty and darkness, John 3.17 shines like a beacon of hope. It reminds us that we are not alone, that we are loved beyond measure, and that a path to wholeness and holiness and joy is paved with the blood, the suffering and tears of Jesus Christ, God's Holy Son. Let this verse be a compass for your soul. Let it guide you through the storms of life, reminding you that you are not defined by your mistakes 
or your limitations, but by the infinite love of God, your creator and your heavenly father. Open your heart to this love, embrace it and allow it to transform you back into being a child of God. This is God's heart's desire. May this devotional thought resonate with you and inspire you to experience the transformative power of God's love in your own life. Remember, John 3, 17 is not just a verse, it's a living promise, a wellspring of hope that never runs dry. Let its words wash over you, fill you with faith, and guide you on the path to a life overflowing with God's love. Let us pray. Oh, Father, my heart is touched by that reading. Every time I open the book of John and I read for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in Christ shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Every time I read those scriptures, my heart leap with joy and say, Father, here I am, here I am, defiled, covered with sin and iniquity, but Father, cleanse me with this blood. It is not your intention to condemn me or any one of us in this world, but that through your darling son, we may have everlasting life, that we may be saved, salvation. We have been pardoned. Father, this morning, on behalf of every single man, woman, and child on the planet called Earth, I say thank you. Thank you for being a gracious, loving Father. Thank you, for the, for the, thank you, Father, for the forgiveness of our sins in words, our thoughts, our deeds. Father, thank you that Jesus is now the head of the human race, and through him we are being made whole again and being prepared to enter into eternity. Oh, Jesus, you are so precious. In, in John 17, when you pray to the Father, you said, and this is everlasting life, that they may know God the Father and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. We can enjoy eternal life from now and when you return to take us home and then back to the earth when it is made new again. Earth was created to be populated with human beings. So, Father, thank you for the Holy Scriptures. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. And thank you, Father, for your angels who are here ministering unto us. Yes, indeed, we're going through our probationary period. Help us, Lord, to stay steadfast, study the word and stay in prayer. And let Jesus take us safely through. This is our prayer with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you can't read the Bible and not get excited. You can't. When we understand the great controversy and what is going on and what God the Father and Jesus has done to redeem us, it is beyond anything that the world can offer us. Nothing the world can offer us can compare to this offer of everlasting life. If you hear the voice of Jesus calling today, do not harden your heart. Yield. Yield. Say, Lord, I give you my will. Lord, I consecrate myself to you. And the Lord is right there, right there to take you, take you out of sin and darkness into his marvelous light. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, for our health tip today, I'm going to look at our eyes. The eyes. Now, your eyes are organs that allow you to see. They take in light from the world around you and send visual information to your brain. Your eyes can see about 200 degrees in all directions, including in front of you and to the side, your peripheral vision. Parts of your eyes work together to allow you to see images, movement, and depth. Your eyes can see millions of colors in varying shapes. Now, we want to learn how to take care of our eyes. In particular today, I want to look at um, cataract, an eye disease called cataract. Now, glaucoma and cataracts both occur more frequently in older adults and impair vision. But the similarities pretty much end there. So I get many calls on a weekly basis, persons who have glaucoma or they have cataracts. 
Now, these two, these two eye diseases are the two leading causes of blindness. But the way in which they affect the eyes are quite different. So I want to look at cataracts today. Now, cataracts occur as a result of structural changes to protein fibers within the lenses in your eyes. These changes cause part or all of the lenses to become cloudy. Cataracts usually develop in both eyes, but generally one eye is more severely affected than the other. If it is in the central part of the lenses or in the whole lens, total loss of clarity and detail in vision can result. Now, what are some of the symptoms of cataracts? Clouded lenses, inability to focus on objects, opaque, not able to be seen through, not transparent. So we have opaque lenses in certain parts of the eye, which can gradually extend to the entire eye. Dim or blurred vision, decreased distant vision, sensitivity to light, frequent changes in eyeglass or contact lens prescription, difficulties with night vision, seeing a halo or glare around lights, double vision in one eye, loss of depth perception, the ability to see things in three dimensions, including length, weight, and breadth, and to judge how far away an object is. Now, what are some of the things that can cause cataracts? Consuming dairy milk. The manufacturers of dairy milk, they're adding a lot of chemicals now to the feed of the, of the cows. And so the milk is now laced with the hormones, the steroids, the antibiotics, and the chemicals. When that gets into your body, it affects your blood. And anything that affects your blood negatively like that can affect your eyes because the eyes are fed by the blood. Smoking, use of steroids, heavy metal poisoning like mercury and lead, which is why I encourage my patients to stop eating fish because the fish is now so consumed with mercury because the oceans are so poisoned because they're dumping so much chemicals in the ocean and the fish is swimming in all of that waste. Harmful chemicals of any form can cause cataracts. X-rays, hypo hypoparathyroidism, Down syndrome, atopic dermatitis, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, low calcium, hair dyes. Studies show that 89% of those who use dye in their hair develop cataract. Tumors, detached retina, a glaucoma, severe myopia, which is a nearsightedness, high levels of stress, allergies, the use of seafood high in toxins, lack of vitamin C, B2 or B12. And in a very few cases, um, it can be hereditary, but very, very few cases. Now, what are some of the natural remedies that you can apply at home if you are being diagnosed with cataracts? Obtain adequate rest at night. Do not sit up watching television till late at night. You are tiring your eyes and irradiating them with x-rays at the same time. Number two, eat good food. Fruits, vegetables, legumes, your peas and beans, your nuts, your grains, and your seeds, a whole food plant-based diet. It is important that you eat a good, nutritious diet get enough vitamins e c b complex b1 and b2 are very important for the eyes number three avoid excessive cholesterol now remember cholesterol only comes from eating animal products our bodies make its own cholesterol from the liver and every cell in your body and your hormones need cholesterol but it only needs the cholesterol made by your liver right so you want to take out all of the external animal products out of your diet because the excess cholesterol can affect your eyes and contribute to the cataract. Avoid all of the artificial sweeteners, the unsaturated fatty acids, 
So most of these, these breads and biscuits and baked products in the supermarkets, they are baking them with a lot of unsaturated um, fats, oils, and after a while it affects your eyes. And of course, the mercury tooth filling, because the mercury, the silver filling in your mouth is made from 50% mercury. Number four, take a good high potency multi multivitamin. Now, when I'm recommending for my patients to buy a multivitamin at any health food store, not a pharmacy, a health food store, look for one that says a whole food plant-based multivitamin, right? With no added sugar in it. Number five, do not eat um, cheese, ice cream, seafood, or grease. I already spoke about the milk, right? Number six, place a drop of honey in the corner of the eye at night. This will help to absorb the crystals contributing to the cataracts. It will sting when the honey is placed in the eye. So what I do with my patients, we have a piece of gauze and we'll put some ice in it. And the moment you drop the honey in the eye, you just cover the eye with that gauze with the ice. It will take away the sting because it does sting. Next recommendation, antioxidants prevent cataracts from forming. That which clouds the eye is damaged from what we call oxidation caused by free radicals. So the antioxidants neutralizing neutralizes the free radicals. The best antioxidants are vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, a flavonoids and selenium. The following herbs are good antioxidant sources like catnip, peppermint, rosemary, ginger, turmeric. Substances such as nicotine, heavy metal poisoning, insecticides, pesticides makes free radicals and destroy antioxidants in the body. So be very aware of this and try to limit your exposure to these things. Food that will help to improve the vision. We have like blueberries, huckleberries, unsweetened cranberries, blackberries, raspberries. Uh, grapes, plums, wild cherries, bilberries are a few fruits that are excellent for helping to strengthen by the eyes. Sunlight. Get 45 minutes to an hour of sunlight each day. Early morning. Go out and do what we call sun gazing. Early in the morning when the sun is just coming up. It is very good for the eyes. Never stare into the sun in the midday um, hour. Right? Never do that. But in the early morning, sun gazing is very good for strengthening your eyes. Reduce high blood sugar levels. Very important. This may hasten the onset of cataracts. So persons who have high blood sugar levels because they're diabetic tend to end up having cataract and glaucoma also. So you want to get that under control. And if you're diabetic or if you're hypertensive, which also can contribute to glaucoma and cataract, Call my office and let us do a consultation with you and teach you how to reverse diabetes and hypertension using natural remedies. Simply call the office at 876-878-8867 or 876-326-4650. Life Health and Foods Wellness Center. We are shop number 7, 4 Springville Avenue, Kingston, Jamaica. Next tip. Avoid smoking. Nicotine is an optic nerve toxin and should be completely avoided. Even the secondhand smoke. You see people smoking, stay away from them. Secondhand smoke, right? Relax at times during the day because even high levels of stress can cause your adrenal gland to overproduce cortisol. And cortisol is a natural steroid. And if you are highly stressed and your cortisol level is always high, they know that steroids in your bloodstream can affect the eyes. Avoid things like aspirin, anti antihistamines. These drugs will also impact your eyes negatively. Now, aspirin is given as a blood thinner, but they are natural herbs for blood thinning. Water is the best thing to thin your blood and exercise while you're drinking your water. We have garlic, you have ginger, you have turmeric, right? You have um, the cayenne pepper. There's so many herbs on, yeah, stinging little red clover. So many herbs that thin the blood naturally. Once you're consuming a whole food plant-based diet, you won't have an issue with your blood being too thick and you don't have to be on aspirin. Now, cut out all flesh foods from your diet, including fish, chicken, chicken, right, pork, all, 
of those things you know like shrimp and lobster lobster all of those things get them out of your diet completely and avoid the eggs and the cheese and the milk as we said before the meats are high in sodium they they contain um caffeine right so you want to avoid coffee because of the caffeine right you want to also ensure that you're avoiding um anything that will cause your blood to become too thick so all those processed foods you want to stay away from them highly processed foods the the fried foods right all free oils you should try as best as possible not to be using a free oils in your diet use your nuts and your seeds your peas and your beans all forms of peas and whole grains the body converts the amino acid in these foods right to the protein help to relax your blood vessels a handful of walnuts or almonds are excellent in lowering high fat in the meal right you can also use wheat germ so go to the health food store and buy a bottle of wheat germ powder and you can add that to your smoothies or to your porridge to help you with keeping your eyes healthy use sesame seeds or sunflower seeds each day right uh, for the protein content for the calcium content in these seeds so overall to take care of your eyes we're still on the new start program so it's nutrition a whole food plant-based diet exercise daily sunlight temperance which is balance and self-control in your life for temperance we say use the good things in moderation and leave the bad things out completely nutrition exercise water sunlight temperance air rest and trust in god these are the eight laws of health and we recommend that you get the book the ministry of healing by helen g white and start reading learn about the new start program and i am here to help you with your implementation you can call the office and book your your consultation or you can go to our website www.debrawilliamsja.com i have lots of health articles there every monday I upload health um, seminars to my YouTube channel, health videos. You just go to YouTube and type in Dr. Deborah Williams and just go along with us as we encourage you, as we teach you how to take care of your body because your body is a temple of God's Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you. The eyes that you have given us, the bodies that you have given us, the diseases are coming on mankind because man has transgressed the laws of God, both natural and spiritual. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. And through your Son, Dr. Jesus, we are learning how to take care of our bodies. Forgive us, Lord, where we have deliberately placed things in our bodies that has made us so sick. But we come to you now because you're so merciful. You're our daddy. And you remember our frame. We're just dust. We need you, Father. So thank you that Christ is here jesus yes he is a second adam and he is guiding us into all health thank you so much jesus i pray for the listeners that those who are having issues with their eyes will have heard the presentation they will implement the natural remedies and you our precious lord will heal according to your will and your good pleasure this is our prayer with thanksgiving in jesus name we pray amen amen my brothers and sisters, there you have it for today. Your word of encouragement, your health tip and a prayer. Share the videos with others as we help each other along our journey through this life. God bless you all. And remember, Maranatha, Christ is coming soon. Get ready and stay ready. God bless you all. And bye for now from Dr. Debs. <music>